Hey guys, Todd with Great Escape Farms here. So today I am working on a bag of chestnuts. I harvested these from a tree in my backyard. And I did a separate video on actually harvesting them and getting the outer shells off. So today I'm actually gonna roast chestnuts. So I have the oven over here preheating. It's, uh, let's see, we're at 130 degrees on its way up to 400 degrees. I have a baking pan here with one nut in it so far. And let me put the camera down here. So I've checked online. There's several different articles. Some say to make an X on it. So an X, you lay it down, lay it down sideways like this and you cut this way and then that way. So I have an X on one. One said to go just uh, all the way around. And I did that with this one. So let me move those over. And let me just show you what to do. So I'm not quite sure how to do this so you can actually see it that well. Uh, so you hold it down and just do one little saw. They say you wanna go in, or not saw, but one little push. You wanna go in about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more there. Now pull back towards me and put a little X on it. And what that does is it makes it easier to remove the skin once it's baked, but it also lets the steam out while they're baking, because if you don't let the steam out, you can end up with these things kind of almost exploding on you. And one of the things I need to make sure of here is that I have the cut parts facing up. Let's move this back. And we'll just do a couple more here. that way and that way so the X seems to be easier as much it's very very cumbersome to do what they said as far as going all the way around because you got to do the sides here which are that's kind of awkward and you really really got to be careful not to cut yourself here another thing this is it's not really a bread knife but uh, it has a little serrated on it and this is very good if it was just a flat knife it probably wouldn't do that well the uh, Online sources all said to use this. There's also a special knife out there for cutting chestnuts. I don't know that it's worth it unless you really have a ton of these things to process. Um, let's talk about the baking part real quick. So I've seen some articles that say to boil them for a little while first, bring them up to just a simmer, and then take them out and immediately put them on a, a cookie sheet and bake them. And I've seen varying different temperatures as far as what to cook them at. So every everything from 350 to 425. I've seen everything from uh, 15 minutes for the boiled method up to 35 minutes. And they say that it really do, is very important that you get the timing right, but the timing is all over the place online. So I'm gonna run a couple of different experiments here on timing. Okay, and the oven is telling me that it's ready. So I'm gonna only, gonna only do probably a quarter of the bag here and I will try different times and see what's best. So by the end of this, hopefully I'll have worked out for you exactly what the best timing is on this. And having done it that way, I will have several different batches done so I can see what's better here. Um, all, all of these except for one right now have an X. I'll go ahead and do one that is, or uh, I've done one that's all the way around. I'll do a couple more, although like I say, I don't like that to me. That's dangerous. I'm trying to get that all the way around. I, I am not afraid of knives, but I do have an aversion to bleeding all over the place, so I try not to do stupid stuff with knives. And it just seems to me that going all the way around is not exactly the best idea in all the world. Okay, let's see. We've talked about temperature. We have talked about exploring the time here. We have talked about putting a little slit in these as we go along. Another thing we need to talk about is uh, when we're peeling these, and we'll get into peeling a little bit later after these are baked, when we're peeling these, if they crumble apart or if they're mush or if they smell 
bad in any way, toss them out because these chestnuts are very high in carbohydrates and they're very much subject to going bad or rancid fairly quick. And there's no easy way to tell how many of these are good versus how many are bad. And I have had these in the refrigerator for a week now. And I have some fresh ones that have fallen in the last week. So I'll go out and get those as well and see if refrigeration versus fresh does anything different on how these come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these up. I will put them in the oven and I will tune back in with you once I pull them out. Okay guys, so I put, hopefully you can see that, I turned the oven down to 350 because most of the articles online said that they were 350. They have been in for 29, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 29 minutes and they look like they are ready. And the way I, reason I say that is because they are the skins are curled up here so I need to set them and cool them long enough so that I can touch them and then once that happens I need to peel them as soon as I can. Okay they've been sitting out for about five ten minutes now maybe a little bit longer than that they are to the point that I can actually start peeling. I started peeling this one right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shells in the big one here and there we go. So that's what it looks like. You want to get the shell and the paper off. I'll put them in that one, that one. There it is. It did burst. And it seems to be coming off very easily. So again, uh, I did 350 degrees for 29 minutes. Um, I, I changed everything. Initially, I started with 400 degrees and 35 minutes is what I was going to do. But I looked and everybody else was they were somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes, one out to 35. The temperature variance, the guy with the higher temperature had boiled it first. Oh, I broke that one in half. I'll just toss that. But one thing they did say is that these things, after you shell them, you put them in the refrigerator for uh, up to three or four days and that's all they're good for. So this one has some bad spots. Again, I have loads of them here, so I'm just gonna toss that one. And that's not very long. I mean, hell, I eat meat longer than that out of the refrigerator, so. And that one almost, it has a different look to it. Almost looks like that piece might have been a little overcooked. And then after they're done here, so I'm going to have to come up with a lot of, with some res different recipes for these. I'm also going to try freezing it now that I think about it. I have a lot of them here and freezing once they're all done and shelled here. So if, if you can refrigerate them, why, why not freeze them? So it's definitely something I'll give a try. It might change the texture, the consistency. So that one uh, split in half a little bit, no big deal. So they're not too hard. Uh, another thing that it did say several articles online is you have to peel these as soon as they come out of the oven, as soon as you can handle them because as they cool off, they get much harder to peel. So uh, that one looks like it had a bug in it. So there's definitely going to be some waste here. I'm uh, about 50% right now. And again, I'm being overly critical. I'm not trying to get every little piece here because I have so many. And make sure you get the little paper off here as well. Come on. And all the other ones came off easy. That one is being a bit of a pain. Okay. So my recommendation for these, this is only my first batch. I have several more to go. I said I was going to try different temperatures and all, but I mean, this is working great. So uh, I will stick with the 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. And the main thing is just look in there when they look popped open like that right there. That is uh, the point that you want to pull them out. And here's another one not looking too good so you see that's all brown in there so they say these things can spoil pretty quickly 
and some of the ones that I harvested this year were on the ground. I'm not sure how long they were on the ground, so I will toss them quicker than I'll keep them. Okay, so we have them all done here. Here is here are the nuts that I'm going to keep and going to freeze for future use. I ended up with a lot of waste here, and anytime I saw a anything in the center that looked like a worm or slightly rotten, I tossed it. I, I have plenty here to deal with. So, uh, like I say, I'll go ahead and freeze this. A couple things to double back on with you. I did go out in the second batch that I cooked up and I grabbed some fresh ones and there was no difference between the fresh ones and the ones that were a week old that I kept in the refrigerator. So as far as easy to peel or anything else. Uh, one other thing, oh, the uh, instead of doing the cross when I was cutting, when I cut all the way around, that one, it did come off easy. However, it's easy enough with just the cross there. So I, I, I would not go all the way around. I just put the little cross in the shell instead of trying to cut all the way around. Uh, to me, that's just safer. And the other thing I did discover across multiple batches here, the two batches that I did, is it is much easier to peel them as soon as you can get them. So as soon as you can get your hands in there and get them, uh, because, and here, let me show you an example. As it started cooling down, and this one was a very cool one. It, then you can't get the paper ones off or the paper husk off and you can start trying to flick it off, but it gets to be more trouble than it's worth. And the paper comes right off very, very easily when it comes right out of the oven. So the a very important thing is try to do it in smaller batches and to shuck and peel them as soon as possible. So that's it for me or for this episode, I'm going to grab a bag, label these as chestnuts, today's date, and put them in the freezer, and then I'll play with them in the winter time sometime. And with that, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for tuning in, and have a great day.